So just coming back from recoil, I uh, was doing some side work. Had Sherry and Ashley do the a job for one of uh, Larry's clients with some of that uh, new recoil wire. And uh, it's just some jumpers with ring terminals on them, but they needed like 65 pair. And we knocked it out in like two days. And uh, But anyways, I was just dropping it off. And um, uh, recoil is starting to get the dumb, angry, um, complaints of idiots putting a, you know, smart 3000 on, uh, a 600 watt woofer. And then they go, eh, it only played for an hour. Eh, eh. And then the smoke came out. Why did you make the smoke come out? So things like that. And, uh, of course management's asking me what my opinion is. I was like, fuck that guy. He's a piece of shit. He's a retard, and um, uh, but you know, of course, he, they start complaining and blah 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 blah, and and uh, he's like, "Well, I'm just going to give him a refund." I go, "That's trouble." I go, "Make sure you put him on a blacklist." So, just so you know, this is this is Recoil's first, you know, uh, entry into retail, and this is part of retail. This is one of the reasons why I I don't sell on Amazon because people are abusive. And then they send back, you know, bullshit and all this kind of stuff, especially then they take it personal. But um, if you do some monkey shit, you will be put on a blacklist and then the blacklist gets shared with other people. And the guys at Recoil know a lot of people. So it's not a threat, okay? I want you to understand that. It's not a threat, it's just, it's just business. If you're bad for business, if you're um, a liability, you will be eliminated. Or, or, or they will seek ways to eliminate you uh, so that you're not in that, that market anymore. And then you can go, you know, go buy from Nate. Go buy from uh, Sonic Electronics. So you can go be Nate's friend. But um, shit, speaking of which, oh no, I, I gotta open it. Uh, I wanted to do a video too on uh, recomb kits. Uh, sometimes if you can find a recomb kit for like um, 50 bucks, um, it's actually worth finding something to, to, you know, like a woofer that it, it also works on a woofer and a frame that it works on. So real quick, um, that happened when, um, audio Legion was selling, uh, recomb kits. Those cleared out really quick. And then, um, uh, a recomb I picked up was to try out was, uh, the destroyer from Rockville. I wanted to, I'm going to do a review on that. And then also speaking of Nate, um, at Sonic Electronics, I picked up uh, Soundstream, uh, it's not SPLX, I think it was the T, T5 or T7, one of the, one of the tarantula ones, um, but, and it was only like 50 bucks, and I think that was for the 12 or the, I can't remember if it was 12 or 15, uh, all this, you know, all the audio looks alike to me, <laughs> I don't, I don't see brand the way that you guys see brand, I just see tech, and I see, uh, you know, manufacturing, processes and things like that. I don't, whatever. So don't get, don't get your fucking panties in a, in a Snuggie because, uh, I don't take your brand serious. All the brands are dumb. Even my brand is dumb. That's why I call stuff Gonzo is to make fun of, uh, the stupid things that brands do. I watched stupid, uh, uh, what was it? Rockford, Rockford Fosgate make up all kinds of acronyms like Topaz and Transana and Mesa and all this kind of stuff over, you know, technologies that already exist and then they do a trademark or a patent, it's more, more of a trademark, uh, on that acronym as if, you know, <laughs> they have something unique. And uh, JL does the same thing. They'll, they'll say patent, patented technology. And then you look at the patent and it's not even for them. It's, it's, it's whoever else makes their amps. Uh, for existence, uh, for example, it was uh, Power One. Uh, out of uh, San Diego, if I remember, and then they outsource it to China or wherever they outsource it to. So, anyways, I got to do a deposit for uh, the guys at Recoil, but um, uh, I'll do more of an update later. Uh, oh, actually, let me pause this. Um, what was it? Um, so, the prosecuting attorney for Jetta Green, uh, and there's some weirdo hippie. Uh, black hippie dude that was all getting up in my business calling me Karen and then in private text he's all like being polite but yet it's like a backhanded compliment he's like you're fat you need these pills <laughs> this is stupid anyways um, 
he was telling me how to how to do things with Jetta, and I'm like, why? Don't, if you if you think Jetta's so great, let her stay with you, bud. Take her in, take care of her. And he's like, okay, I will. And then he gives me his information. And I'm like, okay, you're dumb. Hang on. So, um, but that's uh, that's not the half of it. Um, again, I don't know why they bother even calling me. Uh, we had the prosecuting attorney, which is uh, I forget her name. Jane something or other. Uh, it's not Schindler. Anyways, it's something. Um, and I think her her dad is a retired judge too. So, because um, a lot of these families just you know, they're all lawyers and uh, it's it's just it's gross. It's gross. It's like uh, uh, knockoff aristocracy. Uh, but even aristocracy is gross um, when it's quote unquote official. But it's it's not. It's all fucking buddy buddy bullshit uh good old boys club but uh so anyways uh we were on the three-way call with the uh victim uh liaison uh for the county and uh they want to plead jetta down to just a misdemeanor and then basically send her home and i was like nope you need to plead her down to at least one felony if you're going to do a plea deal otherwise i don't mind going to court and then she's like, well, you pulled her hair. And I was like, maybe I did, maybe I didn't. I don't remember. My wife was there. I, I don't remember. All I did was react. And then she's like, doesn't want to have an argument about that. And I'm like, well, that still doesn't justify Jetta running across uh, a parking lot and jumping a fence after she abandoned her child to then take several attempts to throw rocks through my windows and at me uh, and my wife. And you want to plead that down to a misdemeanor? So that's crazy. But, uh, so I looked up in the, uh, I, I also they're, they're, they're again, this, this prosecuting attorney, man, she's like, I know what the judge is going to do. And so you might as well just plead it down. I'm like, no, 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 no. Let, let's let the judge do that. So, right. So if I don't like the, the, the fucking judgment, I can take it up with the judge. That's what, that's what an appeal is for. And, uh, the prosecutor's like, I will take your concerns under advisement. And then they're going to give me some bullshit, uh, like five minutes with the judge where I can have, uh, you know, everything written down and I'm not supposed to get emotional and I'm not supposed to be passionate or anything like that. It's fucking ridiculous. But, um, uh, I'm, I'm going to reach out and, and, and see what I can do. I, I want to run it up the chain first. I'm going to t see if I can talk to her boss to get somebody else on the job. Cause I don't think she's doing a good job at all. Like the job of a prosecutor is to prosecute. And the reason why you take a plea deal is because otherwise you go to, you're like, you want to take your chances on a, a trial. And then, you know, of course, Jed is like, no. And uh, so obviously she think you know, the prosecutor either thinks that's not a good case or she doesn't want to work or she's lazy or whatever. I, I'm just, I'm super pissed at this bullshit because it's like, uh, basically Jetta took things into her own hands, Right. Let's, whatever, She's, let's say she was injured, okay? That, it, again, that's her opinion, fine. That's, that's her opinion. Um, it, it certainly does not qualify what she did. And uh, so there's, there's really no defense for what she did. And I want all my shit into evidence. I want the fucking videos. I want all that stuff into evidence and, and on the record. And uh, nope, the prosecutor's like, no, nope, go fuck yourself. Uh, you're not gonna tell me what to do, so. Uh, I need to find myself another prosecutor. So if anybody knows any, um, what's the word? Not, a, not, not legal advice, but definitely some tips and you know, Hey, what, this is what I would do. You know, like, that's fine. But, uh, just text me direct, uh, 602-312-6504. Uh, but, um, so that's the bullshit going on with, uh, uh, Jetta Lene Green. And then, um, uh, you know, the, oh, that was the other thing that they, um, the, the prosecutor said was that, um, well, they're going to let her go because she has no priors. And I was like, well, yeah, no priors in this jurisdiction. She, cause she just fucking got here. And, uh, so then I start looking at Michigan and I found her, uh, I did not find any prison, uh, records, but I'm still sorting through stuff. And of course they probably didn't even look her up to see if, you know, uh, she had any priors in other jurisdictions and if that's, you know, relative. So, and I, I want to know what that looks like. It's again, it, lazy, uh, attorneys, they don't think 
uh, what she did was that bad, obviously, because otherwise they would prosecute her. And they also don't think that the damages that she did to me and my family uh, are significant. So we'll see about that. But again, it's just it's, just, it's more just a frustrating process. Um, and uh, I do not appreciate when people make it a color thing because it's not a fucking color thing. This is about responsibility. Um, and, you know, the justice system certainly would not appreciate if I took things into my own hands, right? If I just did what I thought justice was, right? That's not appropriate. That's why we have the justice system in the whole fucking first place. So it's important that it gets used and used wisely and appropriately. So uh, I, if, if you want to take that stance, then I just I have a disagreement with the prosecutor and I think somebody else should be on the job. That's all. So let's try that and see what happens. So, but uh, I'm gonna run it up the chain talk to her boss maybe and uh, see if we can get somebody else on the case so but uh, oops hang on for a sec so I did want to address the uh, uh, 400 plus ounce gorilla in the room which is the uh, Gonzo Jr. motor we got them in uh, I shipped out some I think like 10 of them so far um, and the padding was, uh, like intense people that got them are like, Oh my God, this is so padded. Well, now, uh, after second thought, it, the problem with that was that it ate up all the foam. And if you guys saw the shorts that I, I the short that I posted last night about scoring all that foam, that seems great, but that's going to last me for a while. So, and I, and I want it to last me for a while. So what I'm going to do is go ahead and, uh, send out some more samples and see, uh, about the shipping. The cool thing is that the motors are bolted together, right? So the possibility of a shift goes way down, even if you're gonna you know, give it to the UPS soccer team. Um, so what we're gonna do is uh, do a different box that's smaller, requires less padding, and then also we're gonna cut open the, um, uh, the, the, the factory box that came with them that says, you know, like jizzed by whatever, jizz master general, or whatever I put on the fucking box. Um, we're gonna open those up and, and restuff them because that was one of the issues was that we were leaving everything uh, just like, I, I guess for mint or for collectors, people that wanna collect a, a motor. I'm like, okay, you guys are fanatics, that's fine. Um, you know, be a fanatic over my nuts, that's fine. But uh, no, we're gonna open them up uh, so they're not gonna be factory fresh new anymore and we're gonna stuff them to make sure that there's plenty of tight uh, you know, Fifi padding in there that's gonna uh, give you good satisfaction, which is t the whole idea is to deliver the fucking motor to you in one piece. And uh, we, I got a bunch of these to go out. Oh, that was the other thing was uh, we had everything set for doing a um, container tomorrow for recoil, but it got cut up in um, inspection. So we don't, we don't, we won't have an ETA for that until uh, next week or whenever they're finished with inspection which again is fine. It was funny. Management was complaining to me. They're like, why do they do that? I'm not importing drugs, blah, blah, blah. And I was like, I was like, mm, these sound like millionaire problems. I, don't, I think I need to leave the room. <laughs> complaining that your container of a million or, or more dollars worth of uh, equipment uh, is delayed. So, but, uh, uh, so we won't have a shipping container probably till next week or even uh, early the following week and uh, because of the holiday and all that kind of stuff. But um, I am still on my way home. I will go ahead and uh, do some order packing. And then when I get done tonight and get home after I've dropped off uh, at UPS, um, I can sit with you guys and, and do a, a nice uh, juicy review of the Gonzo Jr. motor. So, uh, but uh, that was basically it. Let me see if I got anything else. Oh, uh, just basically addressing some of the requests that I've been getting. Uh, they're like, you haven't done a shop walkthrough or update, you know, uh, in a while. And I'm like, because I've been super fucking busy. I don't, I like, I sleep like six or seven hours and then that's it. And then I start the whole thing all over again. And uh, right now there's a lot of people mad at me and I'm sorry that you're mad. Um, there's, there's not a lot that I can do, right? Because even if I focus on your order, I have to, that means I have to ignore somebody else's order. So I'm just trying to do basically the easiest things first. And then that leaves the really hard projects that require lots of time to be the most. And then, and then, you know, then they get mad and I go, okay, what free stuff do you want? And then I give them free stuff. That's how that works. So if your order is one of the orders that's getting delayed, 
ask for free stuff. Now, be reasonable, right? So, and that's the that's the key to our future relationship. But uh, uh, you know, like like with the um, the idiot recoil guys that are buying subwoofers and then blowing them up. Um, <laughs> fucking retard. It was funny because the guy was like, uh, uh, he was like, I put my kicker comp in there and uh, it, it, it does just fine. So and the, the problem with the kicker comp is that they make the coil purposely too short. So what ends up, ends up happening is it jumps out of the gap uh, and that it kind of saves it uh, when it jumps out of the gap like that. But again, that's a hard thing to argue to someone who's just dumb. So I remember this guy, he had painted his uh, Caprice um, to look like a Lucky Charms box. And it was just ghetto fabulous on the inside with red interior. And he had had nine kicker comp tens, if I remember right. And it was all powered off of uh, some uh, earthquake amp that he was running down to like half an ohm or quarter ohm or something stupid like that. And uh, he, you know, he... How do I say this? Um, he was just fine with it. He's like, see, I know what I'm doing. And I was like, hmm. <laughs> hmm. So, but his complaint was that when he turned it up to a certain point, all the cones would jump in and out like, you know, like floppy buttholes. And, but it wouldn't give him more bass. And I was trying to explain it to him, but I guess I used too many words <laughs> or something. And, uh, um, I was trying to, you know, like he, he kept demanding a solution from me, but then he didn't want to pay, you know, for nine new woofers that handled twice the power, even though I was doing them for only like a hundred bucks each. And, uh, I was like, well, I can't help you. And then he got, he got mad. He got mad at that. He's like, it's cause I'm black. It's cause I, you know, is my money no good? I was like, no, like, <laughs> and I have to, you know, like, how do I explain to him? Like, I'm not taking your money because you're dumb. <laughs> <laughs> it's not because you're black. It just you just happen to be dumb and you're doing dumb things and you're gonna cause a fire and I don't want to be any part of that. That's really what that's about. Now it was funny. I had somebody else in the comments. Um, they were they were going on about that uh, SMD uh, LOC thing video that I had made, and uh, it was funny. The guy told me um, that he's like, oh, oh, I bought a thirty dollar LOC and it didn't work. And I was like, mm, okay. So I said, it sounds like you had it hooked up wrong. And he goes, no, 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 no. I went to a shop and they said, yeah, it, it didn't work right. And uh, they sold me a new one. And I bought an LC2, of course, for like $200. And it works great now. So he was like swearing by audio control. And I was like, oh, you're an idiot. You got taken. And uh, so, but that's what I, that's why I started Robot Guys. I was that guy in fucking, what, 1989? Uh, and I told you the story before I went down to, it was 20, 21st century sound right there on country club. It's like, it's been like eight other things since then. And this was in 90. Yeah, this was in 90. Cause I, I had my car, um, uh, my 65 Malibu, but I didn't have enough money to pay for insurance. Cause, uh, uh, Lenny cakes wouldn't put me on her insurance. And so I had to buy my own fucking liability, uh, which was expensive but I did it. But, uh, so anyways, I was riding my skateboard, uh, home from school, uh, which is right there at Westwood high school. And, um, if you just go down to university and then make a left at country club, there was 21st century sound. And I went in there and they had a used, um, uh, MTX Terminator, uh, two ohm version with a red cone. And at home I had like two punch one fifties, a punch 45 with the Chrome shroud and a punch 75. And I had them all active. Um, uh, well, they weren't fully active. I don't know. They were active because I had the XV2 crossover. But um, so anyways, I had all that stuff at home running off of a, a battery charger and a battery in my room. And uh, I, but I went in there with my skateboard and I said, yeah, can I see the the subwoofer? I said, it's, it was only 60 bucks. That was insane price, you know, for, especially for that thing. Because I think retail on it was like three or four hundred dollars. And it's you look at it now, it's a piece of shit. It's like less than a kicker comp. But um that was, you know, that was American made shit back then. And, uh, the guy kicks me out of his fucking store. He goes, where are you going to put the woofer? I was like, what do you, what do you mean? Where am I going to put the woofer? I, I said, I, just, like, I have, I have $60 in my pocket. I'm ready to buy. I want to look at this fucking woofer. And he, he kicks me out of his store. He goes, you're just a looky loo. 
He's like, you don't even have a car, loser. Get the fuck out of here. It, it crushed me. It fucking crushed me. Uh, the camaraderie that, uh, you know, you often look for in hobbies and things like that, uh, that a lot of guys like, I, I like it. I love the camaraderie and the sort of the, the tech talk that I have with, uh, all kinds of different guys in, in different industries. Um, I love talking tech with other guys and, um, but this, this guy was a dick and he pushed me out. And uh, I mean, it, it wasn't he like, he was like, he called me a loser. And I was like, what the fuck? Fuck this guy. And so, and, um, I was at home talking to myself and, uh, Lenny cakes was like, um, what are you going on about? And I told her, and then she's like, why don't you start doing your own thing? You know, basically she said, put up or shut up. And I was like, Oh, okay. And then that's when I was like, I got it in my head that I'm going to do this thing. And I didn't even know what it was called at the time. And, uh, and then when I met Sherry, I was like, this is it. This is the, this is the cool chick that I'm going to make this thing with. So, and that was in 1993. And that, that's why I started robot underground was like, I was like, there's nobody out there doing this. This has got to be valuable, uh, because nobody is doing it. And, uh, I see why people don't do what I do. And, the, and, and that's fine. I still disagree. And, uh, my success is the revenge, uh, that they missed an opportunity on a bigger picture. And really it's funny. If you think about, um, the car audio industry in general, it's so tiny compared to other industries like semiconductor or, you know, just electronics in general. Um, it, you take anybody that comes in like, for example, Bill Gates and the farmland game, right? Bill Gates has been buying up farmland, especially here in Arizona, because it's cheap. And then what do you know, when you own all the farmland, you control everything. So it, it helps if you have a bigger goal than just, you know, getting cheap subwoofers to people. Um, but anyways, that's my goal and that's my mission. And that's what Robot Underground is. And, uh, and I'm glad you guys came along for the ride. And um, I think if anything, the, 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 the lesson to be learned is, I know what I'm talking about. And I'm doing my best to help you. <laughs> Don't get mad. Some guy got mad when I, I, I shit on audio control, uh, but he was on Facebook and there's a lot of idiots on Facebook. So I like you guys that watch my channel, um, not because you're subscribers, but just because if you found my channel and, and you, you are watching my videos, you are so much better off than other people out there. Um, and I don't mean that as in like you are better, just like you, you found the underground. You found the shit. This is the, this is the fucking spot. This is the place where you can be with other nerds and not be embarrassed. I've talked about this several times about like, you know, for guys like me, when I go to a, you know, a family get together, I cannot relate to anybody and everybody is so stupid and they just talk about nonsense and it's just garbage. And I just, I, I, I want to go just play with the kids because at least the kids are interactive uh, and they like me to throw them across the pool or whatever, you know, uh, and that's another thing that nobody does. And then it was great later on when, uh, that was affirmed by Jordan Peterson, that Jordan Peterson did the same thing. He was on some vacation in Mexico and, uh, there's a bunch of local moms that were there for vacation and, he, and, uh, basically he was able to communicate, Hey, you, you don't mind if I play with your kids. And the, the Mexican moms were like, fucking go for it. Thank you for, you know, wearing my kid out and, and getting all the energy out of them. And they, the kids had a blast. He had a blast and it's healthy and good for the kids. That does not happen in America <laughs> these days. You cannot go to any hotel and like play with other people's kids. That, that does not happen. And, uh, but that's, a, that's another, that's a different trend. But uh, again, um, I, I don't mind being a weirdo. I don't mind being an outcast. I'm gonna do my own thing anyway. And I, I, I just get so, I love people individually. Like, especially when I first meet him and, and, and this is a little bit of George Carlin, uh, but he's like, the more I know somebody, the more I don't like people in general. And, uh, and again, it's, it's just because there's mostly stupid people. Um, if you guys were smarter, uh, and you took responsibility for your own lives and, and, and took responsibility to educate yourselves and to read a fucking book, um, I would love to have you as a friend. I would love to talk about all kinds of theories. I would love to talk about science and technology and all kinds of stuff. And the guys that are like, uh, that I send like dirty jokes and stuff like that back and forth on Instagram or Facebook or whatever it is. 
you guys know you're in the fucking club and uh really that's what all it takes to be in the club so not not that it's like some premier you know mason handshake mormon bullshit um it's it's just again it's just camaraderie and uh a way to bond with other men which is uh getting more and more rare uh in our society so anyways i'm home i love you guys i'm gonna work on shipping orders um i stopped doing the cutoff at six um, and instead I just, uh, I flagged down a driver. I just, that's, that's the easiest way to do it. Um, uh, especially like in a, a parking lot <laughs> and they, they, they see me and they hate my guts and that's fine. But, um, uh, when I flag a driver down, I'm like, please take my packages. He's like, okay. And then, <laughs> and then he gets to help me load up all this bullshit. Uh, it's fucking great though. But, um, and, and it's, it's, it's crude and effective, uh, again, which is again, the working title for, uh, uh, how to make a movie, the movie.com. So anyways, and I think about that stuff all the time. I love you guys. Um, I've been wanting to do a live, uh, lately. Maybe we can do one this weekend. Um, not for the holiday or, or whatever, but just this weekend, cause I'll, I'll be busy. Uh, anytime there's a downtime, like a holiday or any bullshit like that, uh, those gates are open, uh, to take advantage again, to do something that nobody else is doing, which is that, uh, typically most stores or whatever are not open on those holidays, right? Cause they're celebrating the holidays to me, helping people on those days is the best day that I can get into your, their minds and get into your mind. And I give you the opportunity to resell and I give you the opportunity to make money and people fucking love that. So nobody else is doing that. And I love it. I'll talk to you later guys. I love you. Bye.